Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life and welcome back to the second video in our June build along. In case you missed the first one, you just basically missed the announcement. This video is the one where we're actually gonna start doing some work. What we're building this month is a Kirdashi and we're trying to keep this a super easy project. The metal we're gonna use is a file. We're gonna anneal this, which means soften it. We're gonna get into that for this episode. And the idea again behind this project is that if you're, if you've wanted to get into knife making and you just, uh, something's been holding you back, jump in on it right now. We're gonna release a video every week, every Friday, and you'll have that next week to do those steps. And we're gonna keep it a fairly slow process. I mean, you could really build one of these in one day, no problem. But just, you know, people's lives, schedules, maybe it's a thing that's like, oh man, I'm so busy, I don't have time to build a knife. I'm pretty sure you could carve out a couple hours, one evening a week for yourself get up early one morning and try this stuff out we're just gonna take it really really slow and then obviously once this stuff's compiled we've got a playlist you can watch all these videos back to back so that's the plan that's what we're gonna do today uh, where we want to get to today is have this thing profiled out so first things first we need to soften this file obviously files are hardened we couldn't cut this with a hacksaw if we wanted right now we couldn't file it and profile it with files because it's hard annealing is the process of softening metal now to do that with most carbon steels all you need to do is you need to heat it up to its critical temperature Different steels have different critical temperatures, but one way that you can really easily check is you take a magnet, and once the steel has gotten to the point where it no longer is magnetic, that is its critical temperature. And it is at that point that you would want to really slowly cool it to anneal it and soften it, or if you are hardening the steel, that is the point where you would dunk it in some type of a quenchant, typically in oil or something along those lines. To keep this thing just really easy, this is all stuff that you can find at your local hardware store, uh, gardening centers, whatever. I'm gonna try cooling it down in vermiculite. Now, I've never ever tried that before. Uh, if you don't know, vermiculite is some type of, a, well, I don't even really know what it is, but it's, it's a, it, they use it in gardening and it keeps soil airy. You know, if you've got certain plants that really like a lot of drainage, uh, they need very light, airy soil, they will add vermiculite to that. Perlite is also another product. And uh, from what I've heard, some of this uh, vermiculite, some of the older stuff can be dangerous, uh, but treat it like anything else. The dust from it is probably not that good for you. Vermiculite is very good insulator. And so I'm hoping once we reach critical temperature, with this file we can stick it in here and that will hold the heat around the file and really slowly cool it we'll leave it in there for about an hour check on it and if all goes well again I've never tried this before but if all goes well we will have a soft piece of steel that we can work if that doesn't work what I will end up doing and I have done this successfully in the past when I was just getting into knife making is uh, we'll take our torches and once we've got our critical temperature reached you know you're keeping it in the flame you're trying to keep even flame always as much as you can on the blade well once once we've got that critical temperature, then we'll just pull it out for a little bit and then put it back in for a little bit. Pull it out, and the idea is slowly cool it down, but we're gonna still use the flame to, to keep some of that heat in there so that we don't just air cool it and it doesn't cool too quick on us. So that does work. It takes a lot longer and obviously a lot more fuel. So I'm hoping this vermiculite works, but I guess there's only one way to find out. We're gonna put on some safety glasses. I will be holding this with, uh, I'm gonna get a pair of pliers, a different set of pliers. I wanna hold on to this with some pliers because this is gonna get hot. Also, I'm gonna get this ready and then I've got a fire extinguisher ready to go as well. I've got windows and doors opened up. I wanna do this in a very well ventilated area. And obviously, uh, make sure you've got your parents' permission if you're a younger person doing this because we're playing with fire and, and this stuff can be dangerous. Yeah, I think we're just gonna dive right in. Okay, well, I would certainly say we weren't anywhere near our critical temperature there. Ah, <sighs> I forgot how useless these things were. Now, the one thing is once we've got this whole steel annealed, um, when we need to heat treat it, we really only need to harden the very tip. So this should definitely work a lot better for that because we can really concentrate the heat. But when we're trying to anneal this entire file, 
well, obviously you can see it's just hard to keep that heat concentrated. Uh, you know, coffee can forges, maybe we'll even look around for some means to contain that heat a little bit. And I think that would help a lot. So I don't know, we're gonna leave this here. We'll come back, you know what, if it has been annealed, great. We can, uh, we can just get to work on it. But if not, we're gonna come up with another way to heat it. So I'll be right back with you. Probably we'll give a half hour or an hour. <laughs> Anyways, guys, welcome back. I uh, just went for lunch. We'll check on this. Oh, it's still pretty warm. You know what? We're not checking on this. That thing is still pretty much too hot to touch. And it's been in there probably for like 40 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes. Oh man, just shanked my thumb. Hitting that fly, I just got my thumb. Anyways, so since it's still warm, I wanna take advantage of the cooling time. So I guess we're gonna leave it for a little bit longer and then come back. So maybe we'll be back in about an hour and see if this is done. All right guys, what's well, actually been about, well, it's probably been about Two hours we've left it in here. Um, oh yes, we've cooled her off now. Let's see, let's see what it's doing here. It is filing. It's not really, really hard, but it's not, well, I don't know. You know what, that might be usable. Um, I think just to be sure, oh man, we put a serious warp in there. So you can see it on this camera. Uh, that doesn't matter right now though. Um, what we're gonna do is, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna take this and take it to the oxyacetylene torch. Um, heat it up real good there. My boys are actually joining me on this project and we're just gonna heat theirs up in the forge. I wanna try a few different ways so that, you know, hopefully we can try and figure out as much of this as we can during these videos. Now another great option would be is if you make a, like a small forge, a coffee can forge or something like that. Um, even putting this in a really heavy metal pipe, say three inch diameter pipe, and if you can kind of maybe put some holes in it and bring the flame in there, if you can just can kind of uh, control that heat, you know, when we're using these torches like this, the heat's just going off into the air and it's not sticking around the blade. And even it, just putting it into a metal sleeve of some type, obviously it's gotta be quite robust. That would do a lot to hold the heat in there and get a more even heat and also get it warmer. So that is definitely something we will, uh, it would definitely help you out if you were doing this. But uh, for now, I think I'm gonna take the oxycetylene torch, heat this up, and then I'm gonna throw a couple other files into the forge so we can get them annealed. And so far, I think, I think this uh, vermiculite or perlite would work as well. I think it's actually a really good way to very slowly cool down the blade. All right, guys, we're back in the shipping container shop. I'm gonna grab my oxyacetylene torch and we're gonna see if we can't get this thing properly heat treated. I just wanna show you something real quick. Uh, in case some of you may have been curious what I'm using this shipping container shop for, it's turned into a bicycle shop. Frames, running bikes, oh. It's like an obsession I have with bicycles. Well, obviously, I wanna be careful using a torch around here, uh, but I think there should be, should be no issues. Then on my oxycetylene torch, I've got one of these big heating tips. It's not a cutting tip. Uh, it's just to put out a big flame, so it should work really good for this. Okay, gonna get everything set up. I'll grab this when we're ready. Good ventilation, I've got the windows open. There we go. Okay, let's see what this does. Again, probably for a couple of hours and we'll come back and check on it and hopefully that has a good anneal on it. Like I said, before uh, with just the propane, it was annealed, like it was definitely cutting with a file, but files cut, uh, sometimes they cut a lot better than your hacksaw blade. So I'm a little bit worried that just because we could file it, that didn't necessarily mean we could profile it. There's a butterfly. That didn't necessarily mean we could profile it with our hacksaw and start cutting our shape out. So I think that should be good. So I'm just gonna leave it here. Actually, I'm gonna set it out in the sun and I'll let the sun beat on it and kind of warm it up that way. And then we'll check on it in about three hours or so and then we can start profiling. All right guys, it is actually Friday morning, the Friday that this video is coming out. It's the morning of that day, so you can't, you can't get much more of a build along in real time video, edited video than than this. 
Uh, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've annealed uh, that one with the torch. Again, that's where we left off yesterday. We, we did the torch. Now I went out there uh, in this shipping container and I tested it and I can cut it with a hacksaw, so that's good, but it's not that easy. So I'm hoping I have enough hacksaw blades. And then I take a shortcut for my boys' blades. I, uh, I just put them in here. Brought this thing up to 1600 degrees. As soon as it hit 1600, I turned it off. And like six hours later, it was still 400 degrees in there. So I think we definitely got a nice slow cool on it. Let's head out to the sea can and grab the other knives. Oh my goodness. Honestly, I don't want to build anything right now. I just want to go for a walk. Oh, it's amazing. And then do you hear that? This is what my morning sound like. Every day, this is what I listen to first thing in the morning. Oh my goodness. Into the bike shop now. Okay, so here we have our file. What we'll do now is we'll take it inside, we'll mark out the template that we're going to use, and then clamp it in the vise, and we'll see if we can cut this up with a hacksaw. Oh, I better grab my hacksaw. Funny because a hacksaw is not a tool I use all that often. So it stays out here in the shipping container shop with all the other tools I don't use often. Now this is the part of this build that I'm not overly looking forward to. We've got our Kiridashi marked out right like that, but now what we have to do is all the hard work, all the uh, the filing, the hand cutting, the saw cutting. So I think my plan, I'll put it in the, in the vise, and then I might actually end up starting with a cut straight like this, like a 90 degree cut. That way I've got a nice, uh, a nice flat area to start this cut from, because if I tried, coming with this cut at an angle like this, it's gonna wanna kinda push, like if my saw's coming like this, it's gonna wanna deflect this way. Whereas if I can make a cut straight across first, at least that way I'm not working on quite such an angle and it might help me get this straight. Uh, one other thing too to keep in mind is when you're doing these little cuts, uh, a lot of times sometimes if you just take a small file, like uh, a little jeweler's file, you can, uh, if you're having a hard time getting your saw to start in the right spot, just, just put a little groove in there with a file and that'll help you keep your starting spot and that way you can get your cut coming like this. So I think the plan of action will be, we'll come take this part here, um, then we'll maybe do another cut like this, another 90 degree cut and then we'll kind of come in like this and then hopefully like this or we might end up doing a couple cuts like this if we have to. Uh, this part here might do a little cut right there and then this part here might do a cut we might just file it all but really we're gonna get a very rough uh, profile and then we'll jump to our files I'm hoping this hacksaw is gonna hold up because I don't I think I have one more blade Eesh. anybody says that is a ridiculous amount of work so what if what if you don't have a hand hacksaw but you've got a jigsaw what if you're like me and you're like I wonder well I'm kind of glad you asked because I wonder that myself well maybe the truth of the matter is I just don't want to cut that whole thing out with a file uh, but actually I have wondered I've got my rigid scroll saw here jigsaw I guess you call this a jigsaw and I've got some different bits we're going to use a metal cutting bit 14 TPI and then the key to this is that we're gonna run it nice and slow. Yeah, just 
this a little bit. This might be not the easiest way to go. Well, we're <laughs> starting to do something. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm worried about breaking it. Ugh. Tail wags a dog. I'm gonna go a little faster, it's driving me nuts. Look, our teeth are about done. Teeth are done. Those teeth definitely do not last very long. <sighs> I was sure hoping. I guess if anything, we've kind of learned that uh, jigsaws might not work that well for this type of steel. Keep in mind, when you're using these saws, they cut in the push stroke only, as long as you've got the blade installed that way. So, teeth are shaped like this. This is how they cut. On your pull stroke, you wanna lift a little bit so you're not putting a lot of pressure on those teeth, just like a file. They're, they're one direction. I mean, if you wanna do pull strokes, that's fine. You just mount your blade backwards and you can pull. But the key thing is to remember, your cutting teeth, they're grabbing like this little hook's going in, pulling up material. Lift it up, slide it back, and let it do its thing like that, rather than and just bending those teeth over. Now, what I'm actually finding to work quite well is I'm finishing this up uh, with the flat part of the file and using strokes like this. You know, when I was using this round part, I mean, it's really good if you've got particular high spots you wanna bring down, but I'm actually, to, to get this nice and even and smooth, I'm just using the flat part. I'm not using this round part, I'm using the flat part, and I'm just scraping it and keeping a pass, like kind of passing the whole way as I cut, and it's really doing a pretty good job to even up and make a fairly nice smooth arc there. you see that? That is sweat. I mean, I forgot how much hard, how much hard work it was doing that by hand. And you know, when we do the viewers knife segment, I'm always like, you know, mad respect to you guys for doing it with just hand tools. Man, I definitely, I feel it more than I normally do. So that is a huge amount of work and uh, just, just be prepared for that when you want to do this, uh, when you get ready to do yours. It's not the fastest process on earth. A huge difference is made when you have decent files though. I mean, if you get that simple axe file that, that I had showed you, uh, that's the one that we bought and that we're using. I mean, this is nice because you've got a coarse side and a fine side. The one thing I noticed is that a file about this long, this is a 10 inch, is this an eight inch, this is a 10 inch file. It's a little bit short, uh, depending I guess on, on the person, but like I've got this one here and this is a 14 inch. This is much more efficient and I enjoyed taking really long strokes Obviously, you're cutting more, uh, but I found this made a huge difference, so keep that in mind as well. But you know what? This is totally something that's doable. Um, I was kind of curious. Like, it had been so many years since I've done one of these by hand, probably five or six years, that I was like, oh, what if it doesn't work? What if, what if I can't get it annealed? What if I can't get it cut out and, and done with a hacksaw? And I used one junky hacksaw blade and got the whole thing cut out. 
and uh, we end up with something like this. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this little episode, this segment of the build along. And it's not a lot of work. I understand we're not really making huge strides in this project, but that's kind of the idea behind this. We're just going to do step by step by step, spread a simple project out over a month, and then it's not like a huge commitment thing. And, and really, I think that you could fit all the work that we just did in this video. You could easily squeeze that into one or two evenings uh, during the week when you have some free time. And so let's just kind of do a real quick recap. So what we did was we took our file and we made it soft. We annealed it. Uh, if you'd like to, if you want to kind of get a little further with this project, just Google Coffee Can Forge. They're really simple to make and they make heat treating really, really easy and that'll actually be really handy for hardening. And it also opens up a few other options for different projects as well. So uh, after we had annealed it, then we just got to work and this is where the sweat equity comes into your knife. Uh, you know what, use what tools you have. And again, if you've got angle grinders or power saws, whatever, we tried that jigsaw, that didn't work very well, but uh, you can take this as, as advanced and with the best tools you'd like or keep it as simple as possible. If you're a knife maker building along who has built knives, I I would actually encourage you to do it by hand the way that I did because the last night that I had made like that was probably five years ago or so and it really brought me back to the roots and kind of where it all started from and uh, it really you know what I've never loved my portable bands as much as I do now after after cutting that out by hand and same thing with my grinder I'm like wow I I just these are such great tools I'm so thankful to have them so that's something to think about if you are an experienced knife maker maybe give it a try by hand so what we're gonna do next week next week we will build a filing jig and that will allow us to put a very accurate precise bevel on here and then we'll put the bevel on and we'll heat treat it so we're pretty much going to be close to finishing the project up uh, for next week's video and then maybe we'll look at some type of a sheath or maybe a couple different sheath options also uh, if you'd like to share your progress on social medias uh, use the hashtag SLL build along and uh, you know I've already got a lot of pictures from you guys on Instagram and stuff a lot of you guys have already finished this so good for you guys and um, you know if you want to share you know stories of your build just use that hashtag and they'll show up and we can kind of all you know uh, see how we're doing here and, and see who all is involved and uh, if you have questions feel free to ask them here ask them in your posts on social media with that hashtag you know I'll be roaming around there hopefully I can get to you and uh, yeah this is a lot of fun uh, it's amazing one thing I really noticed about this is that when I'm on my grinder and I'm doing my profiling I mean I'm very persnickety about how I get with my with my profile, the, the profile I have drawn on my blade, that's exactly what I want. But when I was doing this by files, you kind of see right here, you can kind of see my mark there. Like originally I wanted this profile down a little more. But when I'm doing that by hand, I kind of just looked at it and said, you know what, I'm going to call that good enough. <laughs> and it's it's interesting because it is an incredible amount of work, but it's also very fun and very satisfying. So that's where we're at here. Thanks so much for building along, guys. Uh, again, questions down below if you have any comments, try to help you out. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching. Cheers. <music>